Hi friends, Will Davis Jr. here with good news today. Thanks for joining in. It's always great to see you. Please share this devotional series or devotional specifically to anybody via email you want to as we want to get the word out. And thanks always for participating. Send cards, comments, questions, complaints, as I love hearing from you to seniorpastoratacfellowship.org. Okay, we're in this really <laughs> rich, rich passage of the end of Genesis 2 where Eve has been created and Adam is responding. And I'm trying to do justice to the weight of this thing that God creates called marriage. I think I told you yesterday that um, the first institution created by God was family, and family was created with marriage. And before God made Israel and a covenant with Israel, before God made the church and a covenant with the church, God established marriage and the family, and he used marriage all throughout Scripture as a, as a representation, a metaphor of his relationship first with Israel and secondly, his relationship with the church. He describes Israel as a faithful or unfaithful spouse depending on Israel's behavior with God. He describes the church as his bride. And so um, I'm trying to kind of reinstate the, the loftiness with which God views marriage and maybe juxtapose that a bit to the casualness with which we address it today. Because it's, it's, it's not slipped in God's eyes. But today's a fun one. Genesis 2, 20, um, 23 says, excuse me, Genesis 3, 20, make sure I get the right verse. Yeah, 23 says, so I can't see. Then the man said, this is after God has brought, he's awakened and God says, here's what I did. <laughs> the man said, this at last, emphasize that phrase, at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She, notice the difference immediately, she shall be called a woman because she was taken out of man. Um, I've called this today, whoa, man, which is where I think the term woman came from. I know it didn't, but I'm going to go with that because that's basically Adam's response when he sees Eve. Um, the the Hebrew has this fun little interjection of joy in it, and it's that phrase, at last. It's like Adam gives this deep sigh, oh, finally. And I just go with, when you know, the many times I still see Susie or saw Susie in our early dating, is whoa, man. This rapturous, kind of spontaneous, unedited, response to just the sheer beauty of what Adam saw. Imagine the handmade female for Adam. I love that he calls her she. Now friends, I don't need to go too far here, but I just want to continue to put the text up against this cultural madness that it is and gender confusion and gender transitions and, and I, I have compassion for people in those situations. But compassion does not equate condoning. It, it is a clearly confusion state, not a God state, when someone is struggling with are they male or female. It's not a God thing. The lines are clearly drawn in Scripture. But that's not the point of today's devotional. I digress. Shocker, I know. The point of today's devotional is God, Adam saw an immediate affinity, which I'll discuss tomorrow, kind of what Adam felt. But he sees an immediate, immediate affinity with appropriate differences and and attractive differences when he saw Eve and he calls her she female and he says about her that she as opposed to the animals that he'd been watching parade around for however long he says this is bone of my bones this is flesh and this is we're the same but we're different and he realizes that God is creating something specifically for him and in doing so, God elevates the concept of a husband and wife and a male and female union to the highest level possible in Scripture. Adam acknowledges it because he changes the language. I've told you this before. He changes the language that he's using now. And he says, she should be called woman. Notice the woman and man to play on. Uh, in, in, play on the words in English. A man and woman. There's a, there's a connection. They're, they're related. Man and woman. The, man, the word man appears in both. Same true in Hebrew. That's where we get it. So in Hebrew, he says, you are Isha, I-S-H-A, because you are taken from Ish, male, husband. He switches the words 
from male to female now and uses the terms husband and wife. Ish and Isha. Isn't that beautiful? He recognizes her immediately as something special, something unique, and something just for him. And he's like, whoa, man, thank you, God. I know a lot of guys who've expressed that many times in their lives. So we have in Genesis this 3,500-year-old text, this magnificent portrait of what God intends marriage to be. We're going to continue talking about it for a while, so be patient with me. I'm not going to rush through this. This is when, when God introduces a concept in Scripture the first time, he tends to set the foundation for it for the rest of Scripture. So we're getting marriage for the first time. We're not going to rush through this because culture has abandoned marriage. Christian culture has abandoned marriage in many places, and we're not going to rush through this because this is foundational for how we understand marriage. So we'll keep working on it. Tomorrow I'll talk to you about how, God, how Adam felt, what he, what he felt in his spirit when he saw Eve. I think we can get there. Good stuff, huh? We love you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the, the woe man response that Adam had to Eve and what the loftiness to which you place marriage in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow.